for SGD and this will be part four of a series that I started back in February 2021 about the Great Pyramid K 2019 documentary. I think it's nearly up to six million views and the talking points in there are uh, ones that, you've, again, they've been just keep circling and circling and, and getting repeated uh, in the internet. Uh, I'll show, I'll link these um, in the description and again part four we'll be looking at it's basically again sophistry very tricky arguments presented in a very slick way very deliberately deceptive way and let's get into it so one of the main premises and was that the pyramids the great pyramid cafe menkara but also the red and the bent pyramid were not made of stone and quarried but were molded they were cast stone artificial stone in regards to geopolymer so he says they begin at the corners and the pyramids were made of cast artificial stone uh the white casing stone uh, again i won't go in if you want to watch it and if you can stomach it what he makes up about how the white and the dark uh limestone was sourced and there was, there was this clay limestone layer that was just conveniently there just enough to make all all of the pieces but so white casing stones formed a border. Once they'd made the border, they started filling in it. The interior blocks were then cast in moulds. Same, so they built up the pyramids from the outside in with cast moulds. And so again, if they're moulded and they're formwork, then they all have to be in the shape of a formwork. And they should, if they're using wood, they would retain the shape of the wood as you can see in uh, anyone who's familiar with form work as well and they would all have to be quite well fitting there, there shouldn't be any joints between it because basically it's like putting a pouring water in a, into a glass it's going to take that shape so they built up the pyramids and then once they got the first layer then they built the next layer of the um, white limestone casing and this he's showing the great pyramid here he also says that there was a big pit and the subterranean chamber and all of that was cast as well but i won't go into that uh just the basic premise of it um so layer by layer they repeated the process outer casing stones in the white tura limestone and then the darker blocks inside now again the darker blocks inside if their formwork would have to, as the image shows would have to be fit perfectly okay now in that sequence there is a blink and you'll miss it shot where he shows the great pyramid and it only lasts a second and it sort of is an animation transposed over the top of it but it's conveniently short and conveniently blurred so here's a screenshot from that particular blink and you'll miss it scene all right but now if we go back to the earlier video and i'm going to emphasize they have been to the Maidun pyramid the great pyramid and these others now they've got the footage of there so uh they know what's going on so this is one of their earlier shots back at the seven minute mark uh, approximately an hour hour and a half earlier to the uh, geopolymer discussion beginning again their footage their shots now you can clearly see okay i, I without a shadow of a doubt the great pyramid and the others we'll look at that in a moment were not cast stone they were not form worked now the outside casing stones that do remain are very well fitted, but the interior blocks, and they know this, and it's obvious, they were not cast blocks. They were quarried and moved. Okay, now let's say if they were cast, and they were cast away from sight, then they were tool marked and broken down and then put in place, which would ruin the whole geopolymer argument that they were cast in situ. Because why would you crush limestone, then make the material have to import um, kaline, uh, kaline and natron and all these other things from really really far away then just to make it in in block f and then smash it up make it into blocks with all the chisel marks that go with it uh, liberally dispersed with uh, fossils and all that type of stuff and then on top of that use gypsum mortar to fill in the gap so that's another thing a lot a lot of mortar was used not just the great pyramid cafre uh red pyramid and the others too so if the argument is that it's it was more effective to do it well that's just nonsense because you have to you're double handling everything anyway so it was not geopolymer to the side and then moved in place because that would just be like what a waste of, of time um 
but it, without a doubt, they were not form worked as what was shown in this K2019. Absolutely not. If you've been there and seen that, as they have, you don't even need to go. You just need to look at the photographs that this is uh, an abs like abs absurdly wrong and, and they know it, okay? And that's why they do this tricky blurring and editing. At the start, they start with these photos, but when they get to the geopolymer, all of a sudden they lose, they, they've lost their photos in the files to do a comparison. So um, if the pyramids were made from concrete geopolymer blocks in mold, you know, well, luckily they didn't revisit the, these photos l later when they're showing their f theory. So absolutely not. The pyramids were not cast, at least the interior blocks. Let's leave the, ex the casing stones aside for a moment. Now, here's one of our, again, earlier photos. This is the Bent Pyramid. Now, it is not cast. There's a lot of mortar used um, and just absolutely not cast. Now, I'll link this in the description. The Stonemasons look at the stonemasonry of ancient Egyptian pyramids by Mike Haddock, a compilation of his videos visiting the pyramids of Giza, but also the Red and the Bent Pyramids, the other fully stone pyramids. Same thing, it's rubble and mortar construction, lots of mortar, uh, in rough block infills. This, um, you can also see it at the Khafre Valley Temple as well. Uh, so absolutely not, the pyramids were not cast, or at least 99% of them that makes up the interior. Here's some screenshots from Mike Haddock. Again, you see so much mortar. Uh, um, even the sort of outer layer of the blocks has got a lot of gaps in them as well. Some of them are really well fitted, some, but there's a lot of gaps in them. Um, and again, just clearly not cast. Uh, I think that's from the Caffrey Pyramid. Again, just no, absolutely not. The pyramids were not cast in stone, or at least the, over the, the interior of them. We'll leave the casing stones for a moment. Again, there's another image of a red pyramid, mycatic again, mortar, ill-fitting, you know, rubble or junk as it's called. Um, on the inside, you just don't need to put that in there. Now, on the outside, the casing stones were beautifully fitted. That's probably not doing them justice there because uh, they've been a bit broken. But uh, also, I'll try to remember to link this, analysing Egyptian pyramids in the digital age. Again, they go up on the inside, up on the northeast corner. Absolutely not cast. These things were quarried, tool marks there. If this was done, like, again, if, if you're form working it, there should be no gap at all. Uh, so absolutely not, no. All right, so that out of the way. Okay, here's a few older photos as well. Again, you can see they're quite irregular, lots of, you know, mortar and, and filler blocks there in between. Now, there's another, now, at 34-minute uh, mark, he says, all the stones of the pyramids have the same magnetic north alignment, not random, these are chemical analyses carried out under microscope by Davidovitz. David, uh, Joseph Davidovitz is uh, the leading guy behind the geopolymer theory. Okay, but then he shows, oops, I missed out. So then he shows, uh, there's an overlay where he shows this graph connecting that to the work of Davidovitz. Well, I found that image in a paper, The Paleomagnetic Investigation of Egyptian Pyramids by Igor Chuni and Ibrahim A. L. Hemali, uh, Hemali, pardon my pronunciation. And uh, let's look at that paper. So there's on the final page, that's the image there. And that's the one that they've used on the K2019 documentary. So again, just to get a better, better idea and the comparison of them there. Now he said all, again, all of the stones, this is confirmed the magnetic north and this is confirmed that they're uh, artificial stone. Well, what does it say in the conclusion? Here's the important part. They took six, was it seven samples of paleo directions of the free sampling locations from Kafra and Khufu Pyramid, exhibit the common north-south orientation suggesting that they, may, that they may have been produced in situ by a concrete technique. The uh, blocks from one sampling location of the Cafre Pyramid is of natural limestone and evidently comes from the adjacent quarry. It is likely that the block from one sampling position of Khufu Pyramid comes also from the same qu quarry. Finally, we conclude that even if the concrete technique was used, the pyramids were constructed from a mixture of natural and artificial limestone blocks. You can read the whole paper. I'll, um, 
the title is in there. I couldn't get the PDF link, but the title is there. I'll put that as a search term down there. Now, they approach this very open-minded in regards to these blocks, and but also it's a little bit above my pay grade, but they do drop in other points in regards to temperature and uh, things that I can't really sort of... So there's a lot of may, if, and buts in there in regards to, well, it could have been, but they still, you know, haven't... Conf this would not confirm it on their own. They pretty much say that openly in the paper, but they did confirm that of the samples that they took, uh, roughly half of them were c from... They did not have the magnetic signature would that would put them as what is, again is shown in this documentary so uh if you watch the other links to these ones i go through like these guys just uh i've got to say bullshit their asses off and they're so deceptive and manipulative um in regards to this now speaking of david now i think they've um they've even taken davidovich out of context i think with the granite molding melting granite that was in part three but uh, the lie detector is determined that was another lie and that you know this this um femi kresnicki is just shameless so no not concrete except for maybe okay let's get to it now uh then he mentions years later davidovitz brought for for the evidence now these papers are often cited in defense of geopolymer now again above my pay grade but Davidovic says that this has never been, that his work has never been contested. Well, there is a paper by Dipiana Jana, part of my pronunciation. I do have the direct link for that. I'll put that in the description. And um, it's very heavy, again, way above my understanding. So I'm not going to go into, you know, break it down. But there, amongst there, there are a few, because he did a number of different types of samplings against the uh, Tura limestone quarry, the casing stones. Now, for instance, one of them shows his geopolymer and these are the other samples. Now, includes the important one is the Lauer sample. So, uh, the Monteur, part of my pronunciation, um, and the Vidovitz were two guys who have been um, pushing, let's say, are supportive of, I don't want to use the word pushing, that's a bit suggestive, but supportive of the geopolymer theory. And their samples, including the Lauer sample, well, there's a problem with those because it has to do with contamination. Now, in the paper, he does bring that up. And so the Lauer sample, the Lauer sample, now he talks about the um, phosphate. Uh, so there's a coating, there's a layer that's developed on the limestone. The limestone is porous, so you know, basically, you know, like a sponge, stuff gets entered in there and he points out that on one part of the lower sample there's a, a layer of this coating and on the other part it isn't now again it's quite heavy and way above my um, understanding to, to really talk about it in depth but just in regards to that the if anyone says well Davidovitz has never been challenged on this well this paper goes into all sorts of tests you know, not just one chemical but also x-rays and all these other parts and again, someone with more um, skill, uh, knowledge in this area would talk on. So it, it's, I don't know, okay, but, but that hasn't been challenged, there hasn't been other papers. Well, that's not correct. This other paper is pretty, to my layman's understanding, seems pretty solid, but I can't, I don't know, I can't confirm that. So, but the Lauer sample and the other sample of, basically been sitting on a pe person's desk for qu quite some time they, they, they weren't just uh properly handled and then brought to the lab they have been sitting around and that's a big question mark over the, the integrity of those samples are they clean uh what would be the word not contaminated but based on all the other blatant lies fake experiment uh that this uh, you know I do know that this guy is a shameless liar or so utterly deluded and incompetent that nothing he or his team, whatever they say, do not take it at face value. Um, and an update on that from an earlier video. Okay, now for instance, what he says early in one earlier in the videos, uh, this episode, the annual flood is hidden by Egyptologists. They don't speak about at all about floods of the Nile. Uh, he also presents that the flood arrived one morning just like they waited for it and they saw Sirius 
hilly call rising of Sirius and that morning the flood just come rushing in. This is just again absurd notion. It's just not not true um, to have said that. Like again, it has to be a lie uh, because well, firstly, it's an outrageous lie what he's saying here, but it's not explained by Egyptologists. They don't speak about it at all. It's basically, in you'll find it mentioned in um, kids' books on Egyptology and Egypt. Just a simple search, you'll see how much you know. The Nile is essential to Egyptian history, but if a book doesn't mention the Nile, it's well, don't even bother reading it because it was so important had to, with their calendar and their culture and their rituals, hugely important. Um, full name of, yeah, the Nile God. Yeah, it's just, it's an insane, so again, this would be a lie and not explained by Egyptologists. It's, again, well known. Uh, but back to one of, now, full disclosure, I'm a big supporter of the idea that ancient units of measure have got some sort of connection between them and that the, the, the meter is older than what we think. Now, the meter is the meter. It was defined by, you know, in the late uh, 1790s. But uh, there's a ancient Greek unit of measurement where each foot is 333 millimetres or a metre in Tyrol and uh, now obsolete units of measurement in Germany. Their foot was 333 or 334 millimetres, so again, corresponding to a metre. Uh, also, uh, old cathedrals in France, there seems to be, they used a unit of where, where the foot once again would have you know, been to a metre within a margin of error of a millimetre on sort of either side. So I am a supporter of this, but, uh, you know, it's circumstantial evidence all right but now you know i'm not gonna yeah you know, that, that's why it's a bit crazy because this guy is gonna lie his ass off now um he's gonna say um okay they had an idea to measure water they measured droplets of water to find a standard uh unit of measuring length uh fresh water from the nile they measured one drop and then another they were all the same size from the lower nile to the upper nile the drops were all the same size quoting him here and the reason is um, now each water, the diameter of each droplet of water on a waterproof surface like granite or alabaster is constant. So suggesting it's a universal constant. Um, they had to animate this because it is not true. And for the price of 10 drops of water, this, they, could have abs they could have proven it, but they didn't. They're going to lie now. Simple experiment. I've got some nice polished red granite and I used all different sizes to, to get the water. Now... To get one circular, because if you have a diameter, a constant diameter, then it needs to be a nice circle. So this is not just the way water behaves, even on a highly polished surface. And of course, I wasn't using Nile water, so maybe there's some magic in Nile water, but whether it's water droplets from the Nile or anywhere else, droplets will form all sorts of different sizes, down to a millimetre or less, up to two or three centimetres, depending. It's um, Again, this is absurd. Like They can't not have known this they had to fake it uh, if i was to take nile water and put it into a spray bottle would i not get tiny droplets of course i would they know this and then they invent this whole other thing going on there it's a universal constant um what the size of water will never change well that's why we had to make an animation of it which brings us here to this is their screenshot so they take this uh, very thin pencil drop you know it comes to a point all right, keep that in mind. That dropper comes to a point and they put it down and then they get a perfect drop of water that's exactly one centimetre from their first attempt. Uh, this is bullshit. This is a lie. They've got either a, like a, a contact lens or something and they've manipulated it because water just doesn't behave like that. And to get it on their first attempt to the universal constant, that's another lie as well. One centimetre. So what, um, and also it's edited, so it's not just a continual shot where he just puts the, the dropper, um, the instrument into the drop of, into the glass and then drops it. It's cut because they had to fake it. It's a f entirely fake. It's a hoax. It's a lie. And this is a common thing with uh, experiments by lost ancient high technologists and stuff. They fake them. So again, uh, I did uh, this back when. Now since then, um, again it's the it's the pipette the dropper that that counts so 
the uh, Passe Recom Recompose channel. They've also been going after this fella, and and because uh, it's in French, it's a bit hard to find. But what they had done was the same thing. They had taken a a dropper, an instrument, put it into the water, and they got all different sizes from seven millimeters up to eleven millimeters, uh, all different sizes, all different shapes as well, um, and they debated, challenged this fella, and now this guy's changed his tune. Well, no, actually the dropper needs to be a certain size to get the universal constant of one centimetre water droplets. He didn't say, you know, not even like, okay, I, I you know. Well, he, he, they can't admit and take one backward step because in this case, this his experiment was faked. It's a fraud, it's a lie, it's a con. And it's just, part, so a lot of these things you can say it's just absolutely pathetic non-research but then when you see they lie um, in this and again that's same going back to the uh, casting of the stones they know full well um, so he lied about that paper you say well that's a mistake well it's just it fits the pattern of lies and again with that casting they know that those are uh, blocks are not formed and not cast they've been there they've looked over these and not just walk past them in other parts they go up really close and look at the stone and oh look there's wood embedded in there and uh, yeah okay that's uh in the earlier part so k2019 it's not just a bad documentary it's um it, it is intentionally deceptive intentionally uh at least that water droplet for one. Okay, so the pyramids were not cast, absolutely. Now, were they geopolymer made off site and then quarried? Like they made a big artificial limestone quarry and then block, then chiseled it up and split it off and put it into blocks? Well, that okay, that could still be the case. I really don't know. Again, it's beyond me that argument between Davidovitz and the. Um, paper here that I'll show here, the evidence for detailed petrographic examinations of the casing stones from the Great Pyramid of Khufu, natural limestone from Tura quarry and a man-made geopolymer limestone. I heavily lean to, towards that it's not geopolymer because it just doesn't, because it's not cut, the, the pyramids were not cast, even the casing stones that uh, do survive you can find gypsum mortar embedded in there, if they were cast it, they would just be flush. Uh, you, know, you, you can't pour water into a glass and, and, and have a lump of water along the glass. It's going to fit the container. And so for that alone would just dispel that it was geopolymer cast on site. Still might be the possibility. I, I, again, I can't spe speak on this. Still might be the possibility that it was cast off site which would just be silly because again you would have to you have to import the natron and the kaline and all the other materials that come in there bring them from a really far distance and then crush up the limestone from the natural limestone quarries and mix them up all together no no even like no i can't even no they did they weren't that stupid to, to double triple handle all this stuff uh so yeah um I lean towards this, but that the, the, the small samples that were used to support geopolymer have been contaminated. That would be, you know, uh, I'd, I'd be willing to bet the, the house on it um, at this point. But, well, like, no, no, I would not bet the house. I'd bet a lot of money that it is. But I, um, I, I would bet the, bet the house and, and you know, uh, both my eggs that it was not cast on on site because it's just not true it just it just cannot it's no no absolutely not it was not no nah, no nah, no done so uh casting out of a way out of a picture geopolymer well then it's just silly just it just doesn't make you know it's yeah double triple and quadruple handling plus importing shitloads of material from really far away uh but K2019, this guy's a, a fraud, a scammer, or so deluded that he probably should be under some court order to make sure he doesn't hurt himself or others. It's it's so far out. With that, uh, SGD, have a good one. Um, don't believe a word of his K2019. Links will be in the description. 
uh, hope you enjoyed watch out for fake experiments we're never lost ancient high tech you know you want to see it done because it's ridiculous and uh, cheers that's it